have a life of knowledge of the world, knowledge of God, knowledge of His will. And we also made clear that setting goals is important in that life of fulfillment. Because even though you want to be fulfilled and you are responding to heaven in terms of the discipline of it and the order of it and the excellence of it and the quality of that life, you still need to do some things. Faith without works is dead. Prayer without action is a ritual. And we don't do ritual. We worship God. We don't do calls here. We worship God. So all the things that we know in the world, they still need to be done. Even Jesus tells us all, and in James we also know that if we hear the world and we do not do it, we are deceiving ourselves. So in all of that, we realize that, hey, if God is in charge of my life, he's the one who gave me the life, how can I think I'm going to be better at it than him? So we need to submit our life to him. All our plans, whether you want to have children, you want to have 20 children, and another person wants to have two children, or you want to have uh, uh, 20 twins, 20 sets of twins, there are plans that people may have. Somebody say, ah, <laughs> you can tell that only just what the experience is, is awesome. How much more 20 sets of twins, you know? But whatever your plan is, submit that plan to God, is what we say. Submit it to God because as you study the word, some of your plans, Holy Spirit will let you know this one is selfish, this one is unnecessary, this one is a waste of your time and space. By the time you achieve it, nobody will celebrate. The world doesn't even know you achieved anything because it's of no consequence to the world, it's only for you. We can't spend our life aiming for the things that are just for us. God didn't create us to be islands, silos. We just stand on our own. I am next. I my this, my that. You know, me, myself, and I, the unholy trinity of flesh. That is not what God gave us life for. And He gave us gifts so that we can profit the kingdom of God. First Corinthians 12 7. So everything that God gave us in the life itself is not for selfish matters. It's not for being self, 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 selfish or self centered. It is for us to. Use that life to glorify God, to keep on asking questions of God and letting the Holy Spirit speak to us and guide us in our decision making, in the choices we make, in the company we keep, in the kind of jobs or contracts that we sign, and so on and so forth. Amen? Amen. So I pray that everybody here, you will enjoy a life of spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. When you look to the left of your life and the right of your life and the center of your life, you will find fulfillment. Amen. No area of your life will be lacking in the name of Jesus. Amen. I know your area is very weak, so I don't know whether I need to pray for fulfillment. But I will not let you this morning, I will pray it again. I pray that every area of your life you will find fulfillment in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know what you are fulfilled? And everyone is fulfilled. When you come to church, you know that we have been saying since September, you already all know. And I know you laugh when I say, you will see that your amen will be louder all the time. Most of you, what are people thinking about when you are praying and they don't say amen? And they are in front of you. You know those thoughts, you need to say hey, Satan, you are the one getting me busy, why prayer is going on. You need to say amen to prayers. I decree one more time. As we are going on in this year of taking over, when you look to the left of your life and the right of your life, the center of your life, every aspect of your life, you will find the reasons to thank God for fulfillment in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. I agree. Fulfillment is important. When you set goals and you only do that, it makes you only think about what you set goals for. I've seen people in my journey, fellow Christians, they set a goal to make money to do a good business. Then they leave the church for six months. Send them a message, oh, Pastor, I'm with you. Uh, you don't need to be with me. You just need to be with Jesus. And they go for six months because they want to make money. And after six months, Pastor, I'm still with you. Two years later, Pastor, I'm still with you. Of course, we know where they are already. Satan wants us to do things of God their own way. And by the time we go along, we end up not being able to come back to God. I pray that that will not be your portion. Amen. When you submit your plans to God, because you want to live a fulfilled
skilled life, you will see that even when you are weak, when you are getting it wrong, when you are having a good match, but about to do it the wrong way, God will help and correct it. I pray once more, everybody here, your life will be a life of fulfillment in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Without repeating what we say, and we want to conclude today, and even with that, we still have a lot to say. I want you to remember when you are planning, you must accept that your plans are subject to the will of God. Be ready to change those plans when it's not in line with God's will. I've seen people who are having crisis in their marriage, they, they, they've agreed to go for counseling, but in their hearts, they have decided that it's going to be divorced. What they were looking for is that pastor to agree with their thoughts. They're just waiting for that so they can say, even pastor agrees. <laughs> <laughs> and then they just servants of God who have agreed. <laughs> you know, but you know, when we are truly in the house of God, even the servants, that's why we, we like what they call servants of God. So people don't forget, and we don't forget. We're still servants of God. We cannot encourage somebody or counsel somebody to do what is not in line with the world. Amen. It's impossible. And it is not God to go outside the word of God and call that counseling. When people come to a man or woman in a counseling session, they actually thought they came to that man or woman, but they actually came to God. If that counselor is really a counselor, they have come to God. So what they say to that person, what they encourage that person must be in line with the word. The person doesn't have to like it. They don't have to like it. But it must be the truth. So when we are living our life of fulfillment, we are not looking for anybody to try to fulfill our own ego or emotion. We are trying to hear the word of God that is able to save us and able to shine light upon our ways and our path. And I pray that you will be divinely directed in your life in the name of Jesus. Amen. The word of God will truly be a light unto your path and a lamp unto your feet in the name of Jesus. Amen. In James 4, 30 to 15, we said you must accept that your plans are subject to God's will. In James 4, 30 to 15, the Passion Translation says, Listen, those of you who are posting, today or tomorrow we'll go and to another city and spend some time and go into business and make heaps of profits. Oh, I will go to South Africa. I will do this. I will go to UK. I will do that. If I go to UK and leave South Africa, I will make more money. My life will be better. I will do that. Take it to God. Did the people in UK tell you that they are the best places? I swear. Try and go there for just six months. You shall know. <laughs> just six months. They will leave you to come and tell us what you experience. The grass is always greener on the other side. Until you get there, then you realize that what you just expected is actually better. And having said that, some of us who have been in UK for 30 years before we came here, where God sent us, we can tell you that the South Africa I've seen so far, every country has its own negatives. The South Africa I've seen so far is better than UK. Amen. And I've said that so many times. I don't, I don't see people, I say the truth. But I haven't seen any evidence that proves to me that UK is better than South Africa. And yes, it's a dilemma with my wife. So you must be careful when your mind is on. I only target until I get there, I, I, I'm no more here. And then in two years, you still haven't got your papers, you haven't got whatever people look for to get to UK, you haven't got it, and you, you, and you are missing out on life where you are. And maybe God will never allow you to go there, then you will never be able to enjoy life. God forbid. Amen. Everybody wants to go here, go there, go there, and they never submit their plans to God. Ten years later, they are not better off. In fact, sometimes they actually have the place where you and I can sit outside, you know. I realize that we call it cheap, but you call it backy. You know, you have good backy, you know, for the rapper, you know, or white trash, you know. I love those ones. We don't have them in UK. And you like that. And everybody says, ah, it's a blessed one. Really? Have you checked his life? Have you checked what is going on? And even now, I know it's another guy, you can drive one of your cars and all of them are borrowed money. Mm. It's easy to borrow money. Fulfillment is better than that. Yes. That's what I'm trying to say. No more kid anymore. You know? Although if you borrow money, we also teach if you have to borrow money. Borrow money on things that add value to your life. Yes. Don't borrow money on 
things that don't add value. They, they don't add anything to your life. They just show off. That is a waste of your name and your integrity. You know, to borrow money from things that are not important. By the time you finish paying off the money, the car has been bashed and battered. You people forgot you had the car and you're still paying the money. You don't want that. You don't want to borrow money for furniture. If people don't like where you're living and you don't have more than one seat, if they don't like it, they should get away and leave you alone. Amen. Live your life where you are, Amen. in Christ, Amen. on the way to where you're going. Amen. That attitude alone you gives you a fulfilled life. Amen. You will not remain where you are, but you can't pretend where you are. Amen. If you pretend, then God has to say, okay, you've already said you have that. When you know you don't have it, you borrowed the money. So God doesn't need to bless you with the guy. In the UK, as Christians growing up in the house, we bless each other with guys. It's just a normal thing. It's not a big thing. Amen. It's a normal Christian thing. You don't need to know the person. You are members of the church. They can see you come with three children, two children. You're always coming. You're not driving. They just bless you. They don't even know your name. So why are we making it a big deal? We are owing money. For that, if you owe borrow money, it's still not good to borrow if you can avoid it. You know, because the Bible says the borrower is always sour to the lender. That is why some of you, I'm learning some things in South Africa. You have something about you when it is there. Yeah. But you want to pay some people who owe money with the bank. They tell you to pay them by you when it is Why? Because if you pay into their account, the bank will take the money. This borrower is sour to lender. What kind of life is that? You can't live your life like that. You, you see, even if you are doing it, you have to force the lender. It's not the be all and end all. It is not a wonderful thing. When you don't respect it, it will not continue. Amen. If you respect it, it will continue. And then the person who did it to what you are doing, who also doesn't have like you don't have, they are not similar. So you see, they are just getting better and better with what they have. Getting better, God is favoring them. Remember, our God is the God of favor. Favor means you get some things that you didn't want for. You didn't have. You just got it. Anyway. But the other person is still lying and pretending. So they don't need favor because they're already grabbing it the way they should it. Let's allow God, who gave us a life, to give us fulfillment to it. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. If you are sitting in the front row, you are not allowed to be yawning. If you want to yawn, go to the back. Someone is preaching here spiritually. It is very dangerous when you are yawning right in front of you. If you are tired, go to the back and we cause that spirit of tiredness that makes you come to the house of God yawning and stretching while the world is going on. We rebuke that spirit in the name of Jesus. That means the next time I see it, I'm asking the person to stand over it. You're happy to do it. The world is doing it. The is doing it. So that's the warning. If you know your body is saying that, Go to the back so the person preaching is not distracted. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Believe that God's plan, that's why we want our ushers to always know how to lead people to the front. Because of the front, you have to be conscious of the impact you can have on the preacher, the yeah. minister. Amen? Amen? Everything has a meaning in the spiritual that we have to be careful. Believe that God's plans are always fulfilled. Every plan that you presented to God. It will be fulfilled if you present it to the God. Why? Because along the way, the parts of the plans that are not right, God will correct it. Amen. The plans that are not according to the world, He will correct it. Amen. But you see, your plan is still in place. Amen. And you'll be able to celebrate God at the end. Because Amen. remember, the whole point is that we glorify God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. If you are in the sun for 10 hours before you get a job, every day, and others are driving, they are going to office, they are sitting at this. You have to trust God that He can come down. You have to start by trusting Him first. Amen. If you don't trust Him, we can talk all we like, you still won't see what we're saying. Because it's a life that you came to. Life. And the words that Jesus is speaking to us, they are spirits and they are life. Amen. 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 Six, six, seven. So it's life. It's not just words, they are life. When you embrace the word of God, you are on your way to fulfillment. Amen. Don't let any bank control your life. Amen. Banks are not on your side. Amen. Even the one that is your money, they can hold it down. Amen. 
They hired our money for one week. We went there three times. And the bank we belong to, you know, every little thing you want to do, just one hour. Your kiwi is sitting down, COVID sitting, and you're waiting for your turn, and it's everything so slow, and you know, I said, you don't have anything else to do. I'm holding your money, and they didn't call you, they didn't tell you why. Your own money. Your own money. They have the right to hold money if they want to investigate. But investigate and release the money. Because everything is straightforward, there's no hacky hacky. So, banks are not your side. You want fulfillment? Borrowing money is not your side. It is God that will fulfill your life. Amen. It is God that will give you. Many of you right now, you have something in your hand you can do. And you say, everybody tells you, I know you too. And then you say, well, talking about God again. You didn't know what you discovered is actually God's going for you. So you do everything except that one. You are improving on everything except that one. And you're wondering why someone is coming in, but you're not feeling like you are fulfilled. It is because you are doing so many good things, but the one that is the best that God wants you to do, you are leaving that one undone. The quickest way to fulfillment is when you know the things that are most important in your life and you are doing them first. And that's what Jesus taught us in Matthew 6. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. As we are concluding today, I want to challenge everybody here. We may not have said everything we feel like saying, but that is not just us. Just us. But I pray that the little we say since the first Sunday of this year, that it has sown enough seed in you to wake you up and make you know that everything wonderful that God has created concerning you is already in you. Amen. But you have to take steps, disciplined steps, to go and claim what belongs to you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In the spiritual realm, God has written your name on your blessings. He has written your name on all your promotion and breakthroughs in life. He has written your name on it. Nobody else can take it. Amen. But he needs you to walk and go and claim it. Amen. Some of them have been stolen by Satan. Well, you will go to the enemy's camp and take everything that is stolen from you. Amen. And then we sang that song on a Tuesday. Was it Tuesday or Thursday? I went to the enemy's camp and I uh, took back what is stolen from me. Took back what is stolen from me. To back what is stolen from me. I went to the enemy's camp. And I took back what is stolen from me. He's under my feet. He's under my feet. Satan is under my feet. I went to the enemy's camp. And I took back what is stolen from me. Took back what is stolen from me. Took back what is stolen from me. I went.
that cometh in Jerusalem, but I will return again unto you, if God will. If God will, and is saved from Ephesus. We are trusting God that here Santa Rita will have at least 1,000 members by the Senate. Amen! Yeah. Amen. So who is the uh, like, we are located there, people don't come to this far, and all that, that is your own story. We are declaring this. Listen, Amen. Amen. Do we take permission from man before we declare what we want no. to do? But does that stop us evangelism? We do it. Souls have been saved almost every week, and we are continuing the work of God. We're doing prayer, we're doing evangelism, we're doing the work. Yeah. And we also desire that we have over 1,000 by December. Period. We keep on praying, we keep on trusting, we keep on doing. We don't get involved with the analysis. Amen. What is possible or not is in God's hands. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You must set the right priorities. You prioritize with the fear of God and knowledge of His word. Yeah. If somebody asks you right now, what is the most important thing you like about your life that you want to do or become? What will you say? Is it to do with finance? Is it to do with children? Is it to do with uh, business? Is it to do with image? Is it to do with integrity? Is it to do with serving God, stewardship? What is it that to you, two, three, four, five things that you believe are bigger than any other thing? Do you know what? Every time you have those priorities, they will always determine what you do. If you don't have it, you do anything and everything that comes to you. Some people get busy and they are busy doing a lot of things truly. But when we look at the order of priorities in their life that they have, they have actually been busy doing a lot of the less important things and none of the important ones. No wonder they are not feeling really fulfilled. It takes effort, it takes discipline, it is a price to pay for you to try to achieve the ones that are important. But it is in doing them that you actually find fulfillment. Amen. Jesus knew that it is easy for us to go everywhere so that we can wear clothes, go everywhere so we can eat. In Matthew 6, from verse 25, he said, He knows, and he even said, Your father knows that you have need of these things. Yeah. So he didn't say the same. But in verse 33, he now said, But seek ye first, first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Amen. Then all these things, so he didn't leave them. He said, But all these things will now be added to that life that is now putting God as priority. Amen. Some people have children, they stay at home. They have no business, they stay at home. In fact, when they start a new business, it's never dedicated. Nobody pray the right. When they buy a new car, nobody pray the right. And they say they have a pastor. They don't know. But when they are on the road, you can be a smart man. Smart goals and all that. But anything can happen on the road. You don't know who was driving the car if you were you didn't buy a name. You don't know who was driving it before. You move into a new apartment, a new house. You didn't play right. No pastor played right. You just take everything casual. Oh, you know, we, you know, some people will say, in, in our country, we are laid back. Ah, you can't be laid back about kingdom things. Kingdom things is the same anywhere. Because the kingdom of God is not a country. Yeah. It is a people. So the culture of that kingdom is what all of us you are. Whether you are in Russia, or you are in Nigeria, or you are in South Africa, we are all in one kingdom, one God, set of the same principles, one Holy Spirit, one Jesus. Amen. Only one. So it's the same. Whatever I'm preaching here in South Africa, I can preach any other country and it will still be relevant to believers. Amen. It's got nothing to do with the country, it's got everything to do with the person in Christ Jesus. So as we are, as we are concluding today about life of fulfillment, 